Hello, hello, how we going? Uh, been a minute, hasn't it? I'm out here for three days. We're gonna head up to the top of these mountains. I'm actually at Barrington Tops. A lot's happened in my life over the last month, uh, plenty. So it'll be good to get up there on my own, out in the bush and just <sighs> cleanse it. Just a bit of bush therapy, you know what I mean? But yeah, I'm keen and I've got lots to share with you guys about the year ahead and it's gonna be quite different and quite exciting. Yeah, I can't wait. Anyway, I'm just gonna have a bit of food and, and then we'll hit the trail. Watching you champ. Keep walking. We're gonna do a trail from this blue gum loop track here, but we're gonna follow it all the way up to Rocky Crossing, and then I'm gonna follow it all the way up the Corker Trail to the plateau up on Barrington. All right, off we go. It's crazy. I was looking at reviews and some trail notes before I decided to come out on this one. And there was a few people talking about, oh, it's just boring. It's just trees. You hardly see the river and stuff like that. And I mean, each their own, but I've only been on it for two minutes and it's beautiful. It's so beautiful. I wouldn't even care if I wasn't on the river. It's so, it's so lush and green. By the time this video comes out, it's probably been a month, maybe a month and a half since my last video. Now, I took a bit of a extended break. My partner, Carly and I decided to go our own ways over the new year. You know, something like that's never easy to do. It's sad, you know, she's such a beautiful girl, but you know, things happen for a reason. Anyway, um, you guys don't really need to know that stuff, but uh, it was important for me to catch you up because of what it means moving forward with the channel, which is actually pretty, pretty exciting. I'm puffed. It's been a while. It's been too long since I've hiked. Basically, I packed my stuff up. I went up over sort of the New Year's break to catch up with mum and dad and my sister and her kids went up as well. So I got to hang out with them for a week, which was awesome. And in that time, I decided, you know what? I'm just gonna hit the road full time. <laughs> I'm gonna hit the road, travel, explore Australia and film the exact same content that I have been filming. It won't be like a lap of Australia road trip style. It'll, I'll be doing the road trip and then filming the cool hikes and pack rafting trips and canoe trips and stuff that I have along the way in all different parts of the country, which I think is gonna be bloody awesome and to be honest I think it's a long time coming and something I should have done a long time ago sweating up a storm obviously the humidity is mental in here so anyway that's what's happening at the moment um, it's why I've, that's also why I've been quiet on social media just been busy trying to organize and sort through all my belongings and seeing what I'll take with me on the road and had to sell a few things and order a few things for the car to make it practical to live out of 24-7, um, not just for a weekend or, or a week-long trip, but uh, for the foreseeable future. So anyway, there you go. I think you're all caught up now. And this is the first trip of the year. It's gonna be a bit of a dusting off the cobwebs and just getting my head straight and just helping me think clearly moving into this new, this new chapter in life. And I'm really hoping to find a nice big cold body of water to basically just baptize myself uh, in mother nature. Not in a God way, just in a mother nature sort of way. <laughs> Whatever that means. Find some cold water, dunk old noggin. And then we'll be good as new. I'll rise like a phoenix. I'll rise like a phoenix um, out of the ashes of what is my life. <laughs> Look at this old thing. Wow. Oh, leech on hand, I probably shouldn't stop too much. Look at the size of this thing. <laughs> that would have been a tall boy. Leeches all over, leeches all over, literally one. Oh, two on hand. Oh my, oh my lord. Oh, they're all over the tripod. Oh, mental, I can't stop here. They did say that in the reviews. They said it was like just a bajillion leeches 
they said that one guy said it took him like an hour to peel them all off him which for most people would probably be enough to steer you off um, bothering with this trail but uh not me mate not me the bush is literally going to cleanse me it is going to cleanse the toxins out of my blood via way of leech i've just figured so this is it's now turned from a metaphorical uh cleansing baptism experience to a like a technically accurate um one so back i venture into the depths of the natural world a place that always offers me a piece of what I'm searching for, or at the very least a place where I'll find it within myself, buried beneath the clutter. Be it an epiphany, a restored memory of a past realisation, or a little philosophical slice of goodness. Stick around to the end and we'll see what I've managed to find out. Enjoy the adventure. All right, well, we're up and out of that creek system now. Now to commence the hike up. We're currently at 660 meters uh, in elevation and we're gonna end up at about 1,573 or 1,553, something like that. Roughly about 10, 10, 12 Ks. I know. We're gonna sit through there. Let's see. We're on, we're on, here we go. This is the pace. Yeah, first hike back for the year. I should definitely um, just smash out 15 k's up a creek followed by eight k's up to the first campground. It's the only feasible option, um, I thought. Oh no, mate, bloody hell. This fella never made it. Bit of the tread. <sighs> Let that be a warning to others who follow in his path. <sighs> I better put that in my pocket now, I picked it up. All right, got to stop for water break because I'm absolutely knackered, sweating my titties off. <sighs> oh yeah, steep. water now immediately I'm absolutely shattered look at me uh, I'm bloody shattered I'm absolutely shattered nothing worthwhile was ever easy though was it it's what they say it's what I know it's what I know though just got passed by some young fit bloke while I sat here Drinking water looking like an absolute sack of potatoes. He actually said, he said, uh, coming down or going up? And I hesitated because I wanted to say going down just because of the state of me. But I said, going up. And then I cried and he just patted me on the back. And, um, and then he just quietly continued on his way. And we're off again. Man, it's really pretty. Really pretty through here. Wow. We're just about to hit 3K, so we're getting there. We're getting there. So cool. Look at these trees. Wow. Absolutely gorgeous through here. Oh, so worth it. So worth it. I've just hit the 4K mark. One of my legs is starting to cramp, so I'm just gonna have something to eat, have some hydrolytes. Just goes to show how quickly your, your fitness, your cardio can drop off when you, when you have a month on the brakes, you know what I mean? It's gonna feel good when I get to the top though. It's gonna be worth it. Be that big stamp, that big stamp of starting the year out again. <sighs> Gotta earn it. That's why I chose this one, I wanted to earn it. <laughs> what an idiot. Oh, get 
out of shape. I feel ill. We're getting there, a couple more Ks. A couple more Ks. I had a nap. I had a nap back there. Did not have time to wait for boiling water to cool down. <laughs> I finally reached the campground, no one's there, both my legs have just been severely cramping up for the last, I don't know, two and a half, three k's of just uphill. The second I set up the camera on the tripod, a couple walk in, they've already done, they've already been up, done the loop, camped there the first night and now they're camping there before they head back down tomorrow. What are the chances? <laughs> Uh, they're really, really lovely though, really nice. But that's fine, I'm actually, honestly, I'm so pooped. It's recovery, 31 hours, no worries, I'll, I'll get right onto that. It's 20 past five, I'm gonna get water, boil it, <laughs> have a nap while it cools down. I'll eat some food actually as well. And then I'm just gonna string up the hammock and go to sleep. And uh, yeah, I'll uh, see you guys in the morning. All right, we're back on the move, boys and girls. Uh, ended up being a really nice night. That couple uh, that were camped in the same area had a good yarn with them. They actually came over initially to ask how the how the hammock setup goes. So I just gave them a rundown on that, and then we got to talking about the about the hike up, and uh, it was just funny. It lifted the spirits, knowing that they had had a pretty garbage time like I did on the way up. But they also said that there's a little side track towards the top end of it. Thank God. But when you go down there. There's actually a hut that I think they said is about 80 years old. It's got a log book in it. So I'm really keen to check that out on the, on the way back down. Another thing, my jet boil, the pin on my jet boil bloody busted. So yeah, the pin that presses down on the canister to let the, the gas out, <laughs> it's just snapped off. Lucky I've got a life straw and I've also got means to boil. But if you came out here relying on that, especially if you know, you're not very good at starting fires in really damp conditions like it was. Yeah, they, they couldn't get their fire going. You'd be in trouble. <laughs> Got the snake gators on because they said they saw a couple red belly blacks and they saw a couple of browns as well. So feeling probably about 70% this morning. <laughs> but they said it's a real easy walk. So let's see what we see. I've just made it to Black Swamp Campground. It's that big low lying area over there. It's actually not a bad campground. Like it's, it's a lot drier than the one I stayed at last night. Yeah, this would have been a really nice campground. So much drier. You've actually got a view to look out over. So anybody coming up here, going up the Corker Trail to do this loop walk of the plateau, Black Swamp Campground could be the one. I'd say <laughs> big call, but it could be worth pushing on Okay, so we're gonna walk another 4Ks along Airplane Ridge. 
and make our way to Junction Pools, where I'm hoping to have a dip and have my baptism. Look at this view as we've just rounded the corner of Black Swamp. Wow. Wow, it opens right up there. You also get um, brumbies around here, wild horses, loose horses, whatever you want to call them. Um, might see some, I don't know. There's another swamp further north of here. My old man is, oh, mum and dad have both seen brumbies around that area. So yeah, that'd be pretty nice surprise if we see some, or would it, depending on how you look at wild horses. <sighs> they do cause damage, but I also think that <laughs> the feral pigs cause a lot more damage than the horses. Is it just me, or does that tree trunk, does that tree trunk look like, um, is it Sar Saruman, Saruman's helmet? Or is it, or is that the wizard? I can't remember. The guy with the big helmet, the big main evil dude out of Lord of the Rings. It looks like his helmet, doesn't it? Cooked, absolute cooked unit. That's all damage from wild pigs. They dig up the dirt, looking for their meals. And this is what you see everywhere and it's so bad. Like it completely annihilates an area. So I just uh, stopped and had a chat to the dude that passed me on the way up, the, the young fit bloke who went storming past, looking like he wasn't even struggling. Uh, and he just told me that at the next um, swamp up here, there's wild horses. So what are the chances of that? He's just stayed the one night, he's gonna start heading back down now. I asked him, I was like, oh, where'd you camp last night? Did you go the other way around the loop? He goes, no, I actually just like found this random hut and I camped there and I was like, oh, no way, that's so sick. Pretty cool, sort of makes you wonder um, if there's any other huts hiding around these places. I'm sure there is, or at least some remains. So I've just finished this pretty seedy little ascent. It wasn't long, just steep. Start to see a bit of a lookout over there. There's a sign here, because we're currently on Airplane Trail, I believe it's called. I'm currently standing on Airplane Hill, 1,531 meters above sea level. So a plane crashed up here on the night of the 16th of April, 1945. A mosquito fighter bomber, an Aussie one, crashed up here on a, on a training mission. And the whole plane, those mosquitoes it says here, were made pretty much entirely of wood. <laughs> 17th of January, 1946. Okay, so the next year, Kenneth Collison of Stewartsbrook was mustering cattle and came across the remnants of the plane and the pilot and the, the other two blokes who are on the plane. So the bodies were able to be recovered. Apparently there's bits of the plane like over a wide area, all through the treetops as well, scattered all over the ground. But unfortunately, all over the years, um, people have taken bits of the plane as souvenirs and now all that's left uh, is the fact that this place is called Airplane Hill. <sighs> Rest in peace to those poor souls. Okay. I think I see the campground just down here for Junction Pools. Yeah, we made it to Junction Pools. Wow. You know, I'm jumping in for a swim. This could end very badly. I've just seen the perfect, stunning swimming hole up the end of this little trail you can see here. So, might be time for a mother nature baptism. How's that? Only problem is the sun's gone away and it's all overcast, but I'm still hopping in.
exciting. My legs are cramping out so badly in there. Oh, it feels so good though. And now the weather comes out. It doesn't even matter because I'm drenched anyway. get back over to that campground and uh, I'll set up the tarp, put on some dry clothes under that and probably just chill out for a while and see if the rain passes but yeah get out of this wet stuff anyway. Get in. Here we go. Well, she ain't pretty. She ain't pretty, but she's better than nothing. Oh, man. Just started cramping so badly while I was setting that up. I had to keep stopping because my legs are just oh, so bad. Anyway, I'm gonna get a towel out, dry down, and Chuck some uh, semi-dry clothes back on. Tell you what I wouldn't mind right now. A working jet boiler. <laughs> what are the chances of that thing broke this morning? A hot coffee or a hot chocolate would go a long way. I don't like my chances of getting a fire started either tonight considering how drenched everything's going to be. So it's going to be cold meals and cold drinks. Leech on arm, leech on arm. Alert, alert. Hey mate. Just trapped in here. Is what it is, we'll see what happens. I'll get back to you if the uh, weather calms down. It all lined up with my baptism in the water too, didn't it? The second I got out, it started raining. Magic. I'm having this meal cold. It's coconut ginger chicken. It's one of the off-track meals. It's actually really good cold. So I can imagine it would be uh, delicious hot. I could get hypothermia up here. There was bad timing considering I just jumped into that freezing cold sub-alpine water. <laughs> Gosh. It's literally starting to flood where I, where I am. <laughs> so it's just ticked over one o'clock now. It only takes a couple of hours for me to sort of finish that hike around to back to Wombat Campground. I was hoping to not camp there again tonight, but I think I'm better off just waiting this out, even if it's another couple of hours, and that'll still allow me enough daylight to get back to Wombat Creek Campground. I just don't think I should go drenching myself through this, considering how cold it gets at night. Play the waiting game. I'll give you an update when there's something worth reporting on. So I'm reading this book that um, one of my subscribers 
and just fellow adventurers, uh, Kai, Kyson, shout out mate, sent me after he finished reading it, after he saw that I was about to head off and just sort of travel and explore and film full time. And uh, yeah, it's a pretty fitting book. It's about a New Zealander dude who got into tramping at a young age and, and never really stopped. But <laughs> he's just sort of covering off on what it was like when he was younger and he'd sort of just explore his farm, his, his parents' farm, and his dad would always find him either in the barn sleeping with all the, uh, the orphaned animals or he'd be like laying up against a cow for warmth. <laughs> and I just read this like tiny little paragraph to you. I did it all barefoot. That was how all of us district kids got around. In school photos from that era, almost no one is wearing shoes. If someone ever turned up wearing socks and shoes, even if it was winter, they'd get a puzzled look from the rest of us and the next day they'd be barefoot again. Just remember, this is New Zealand. If the morning was especially cold and frosty, we'd warm our frozen feet in a nicely steaming cow pat cow poo for anyone who doesn't know. Our towny friends found it disgusting but we thought it was a perfectly sensible solution. <laughs> oh, that's so good. <laughs> it's a good book. Gone bush. Gone bush. A life in the back country and beyond. Paul Kilger. All right we finally got a break in the weather so I'll pack up, take down the tarp and We'll head off again. We bid farewell to that campground and that uh, piece of shelter from the weather and we crack on. More camp spots up the top here. Hey little guy. Cute. Okay, so now we follow this fire trail for maybe a hundred meters or so and then we'll find a walking track down through a place called Edward Swamp which um, the couple that I camped next to last night said was probably the highlight of of this loop so looking forward to that maybe that's where the horses will be and then when we get through Edward Swamp there's a lookout looking down from the Barrington mountain plateau fingers crossed there's a view and it's not just clouds so it's this way, this way to Edward Swamp. Horse poo. So we might see our wild horses yet. And the rain's back. Look at this though. Edward Swamp. Oh, some horses over the far side there. And the sun's coming out. What an absolute treat. Oh, yes. Happy days. Happy days. <laughs> That's just further upstream. Um, same river that I, look at my hair mate, same river that I swam in, oh. Whatever. Well, those horses are quite far away, but uh, maybe we'll come across some more a bit closer. How's this bloody sun's out, got a slip slop slap. One extreme to the other. Just loads of this stuff, open fields, following trail, not loads to report. It is pretty though, it is very pretty. Such a welcomed bit of relief from sitting under tarp or damp hammer down rain. It's very nice. Well, I dare say this hasn't been the most exciting video in terms of trip and content, but it's definitely been what I needed, what I came out here for, just a 
get the ball rolling again with filming and um, and hiking and clearing the cobwebs out of the old noggin. It's been great for that. Having that battle up that hill or up that mountain, it was certainly what I needed. It wasn't what I wanted, but it was what I needed. And I did know that. So it's been a great experience for me coming out here. I hope, I hope it's at least been enjoyable to watch. Just maybe not as exciting as some of the others. Some of the others. Edwards Hut, 1905 to 1946-47. Burnt down in a fire over the summer of 90, 1946. Damn, would have been right here. Edwards Hut was built in 1905 by Bill Edwards, brother-in-law George Leake. The hut was weatherboard construction and consisted of three rooms. Says that um, it went on to be used by summer cattle grazers and then even like scientific groups and recreational groups. Oh well, keep walking. Edward's hut doesn't exist, but we know one that does. And we will see that one. Red belly black on the trail there. Got to be careful around these parts. First one I've seen though. Thought I would have seen a lot more snakes by now. Not entirely sure that was a red belly black snake. Had a brown head on it. All right, I've just taken the turn off to Kerry's Peak, 250 meters. Oh, oh, it's a campground here, which isn't marked on the map. And an old hut. Carrie's hut. Built in 1934. The original hut as depicted was built by members of the Barrington Tops League, Dungog Tourist Bureau, uh, in 1934 when the tops were still being considered to have potential as a ski field and tourist resort. <sighs> the poor buggers that cut all the way in here <laughs> and to only find out that they were being very ambitious. That must have hurt. Little fireplace. Probably snakes in there, no doubt. Well. Bit of rubbish. A lot of names and stuff have been marked in here. Tell you what, if it wasn't quite as dank on the ground here, I would have camped here tonight because I'm buggered. <laughs> Alright, let's go see Kerry's Peak. Look out. Baby worth it. It's all uphill. Here we go. Oh my lord. Wow. Oh. Check that out. Oh, I'm buggered. No wonder I'm so buggered. I wish I had a bike to ride down in my car tomorrow. Wow. Yeah, little sundial. Must have been a flag race here at some point. Central Mapping Authority. Geodetic Station, Kerry's Peak. Well done, mate. Well done, buddy. Well done. So the couple that I camped with last night said that when they finally got to that lookout after doing the same loop, they got there and it was all clouds. So I'm bloody stoked that it was just such a massive view. Um, it actually did sort of take my breath away a bit because I was fully anticipating clouds just because it, it has been overcast. But no, it was beautiful. I was contemplating not even doing the side, side trek out to it because I'm just so buggered. I'm glad I did. So now we're heading. We're not going to stay at the campground stay at it last night. We're going to head to um, that area that has the hut that everyone's been telling me about. Let's go. 
I can hear running water. Oh, thank God. Oh, thank God. Wow, this place is magic. Seriously. So we're just following the creek along this trail. Oh, no way. There's the hut. That's so cool. Wow, so pretty. So damn pretty. Wow. Wow, it's actually huge. Wow. How awesome is that? The Selby Alley Hut. Okay, I just wanted to read the sign on the door to make sure that we can enter. We can though, so let's have a look. Wow. Okay, we might need a head torch for this one. Love that. Oh, look at a lock for the door. Wow, full sleeping quarters in here and everything. few bits and bobs. Tell you what I wish they did have in here though. Wish they had a packet of snakes and a few Mars bars or Snickers. Anyway guys, I need to get some water boiled up and get some food going because yeah, my body's asking for it. And then we'll come back in, have a final look at some of these scribblings on the wall and stuff. Gonna borrow this to boil up heaps of water so I can just do it in one go. My short time out here, amongst the trees, the ferns, the running water, the calls of the birds and the sounds of the leaves crunching beneath my feet, have reminded me how simple things can be, how simple things were meant to be. A lot of us live in a world where we can have most necessities at the flick of a switch or the turn of a tap or a tap of a screen, luxuries that come with their own vices. A forest of endless options everywhere you turn, everywhere you look, options that equal endless decisions. It's easy to feel suffocated by these luxuries of modern human invention and creativity. I love being out here. No reception, no constant reminder of things that needn't be reminded of, just what's in front of you, what you can see, touch, feel, smell, taste. Just simple tools and the materials the forest provides. Warmth in the cold, cold running waters in the heat, exercise without a gym or a heart monitor, as I nurture this fire, I hope that you have taken the time to watch it come to life. No 10 second highlight reel, no instant gratification and on to the next. This moment right here represents life and everything in it. How it works, how it fails, how it prospers or how it dies. This is why I come out here. This is what matters. This doesn't just heal an overcrowded mind like medicine. It slows the mind down and brings it back into harmony with the world, the natural world. I hope you can experience this too. Morning guys, how are we going? Had a pretty good night's sleep. I'm just, uh, I've just finished having some brekkie, just finishing my coffee, um, organized my stuff. I'll pull down the hammock and the tarp, and then we'll go down and see what this waterfall is here. And then we'll um, go back inside the hut and I'll just give you a last little look in there. We'll fill out the, the log, the log book, with a nice little entry. And then I think it might be time to leave. Oh no, 
Pat's developed a fresh one. <laughs> Looking a bit worse for wear after this trip. Uh, well, it's life out here in the bushlands, isn't it? Essentially packed up a couple of bits and pieces there. I'm having a drink to finish off. I think we go down this way to get to the waterfall, but I'm just going to read this. Just going to read this sign over here. Selby Hut built 1955-56. The original hut, which had an outside veranda, wow, was built in 1955 by club members over weekends and public holidays in short intensive phases. All tools and building material were carried in by club members. Madness. From Barrington Guesthouse and the recorder with the exception of the timber which was sourced from the site. That makes sense. But still, how'd they get these sheets in? The ornate sign above the door was carved by Rex Filson. Mad dog, that sign is so sick. The Shelby Alley Hut. Over the years since 1956, club members have made a number of modifications and repairs to the original hut, including rebuilding a portion of the hut, relocating the doorway, replacing the wooden shutters and translucent panels. Nice touch, I like that. Repairing, replacing bunks, remodeling and rebuilding the chimney and extensive repairs to the southwest corner of the hut in 1982. Wow, five years before I was even born. Though close to a track today, originally it was designed to be hidden in the area the club called Hut Creek and only to be found by those who could read a compass or knew what to look for. That's cool. There you go. Anyway, I'll have a look at the waterfall place you can walk down over here be a bit nicer it's just so green and luscious like i wonder how long before that tree falls down on that hut okay steep one oh, wow i should have had my baptism in here <laughs> That is gorgeous. That is absolutely beautiful. All right, we'll go back up, take a look at the hut. Yeah, you can see a little bit better now, now that it's not so dark. All these bunks right up to the top there. Bit of storage, top of that curry. So damn cool. This is the old fireplace here. Nice bench in front of it, you can dry things on, sit on. Warm your hands. Wow. Save the Colo wilderness. <laughs> Amen. I wonder if that's the original club members. Ah, oh, that's Selby himself in that photo. Selby Alley, outside the Selby Alley hut. This is Selby Alley's actual own 125,000 Barrington Tops sheet. Must be written on the back of it. Must be the map on the back. Selby wanted me to have it when he knew he was likely dying. Selby was a great remote area bushwalking leader, especially to me, the big fella, as he used to call me, a bit like a son in the remote area wilderness. In my early days of our great sport, remote area bushwalking adventuring, Selby especially and others inspired me over many years, filling my young bushwalking mind with his ways and passing on his wealth of bushwalking experience. Thanks totally to Selby, now I have led and put thousands of bushwalkers onto the best way, the Selby Alley way of remote area bushwalking and expedition leadership. Miss you still today, Selby, remote area bushwalker expedition. Love you still today and always. Great bushwalking, comrade and true mate. <laughs> That's so cool. Wow. It makes me feel like I've missed out on something here. <laughs> Should have made coffee in this old thing. Looks like it's seen better days. Not too much else to show you. Those windows open up, there'll be a nice view. That's Selby there. Selby Alley. All right, we've got the log book, fill her out. Okay, what do we got here? Colorful pens in there. Yeah, so here it says, this hut has provided um, shelter for walkers in need of refuge since 1956 and was named in honor of Selby Alley, a friend and inspiration of many bushwalkers. So that's something I was about to touch on actually. These huts, huts like this one, are, are of another time, you know what I mean? They're, they're a dying breed. It's very rare to find 
like original huts like this, yes, maybe they've been worked on a bit, but you know, the floors made of these these giant stones found in the area. This was built, you know, back in a time where these bushwalking clubs were still exploring new areas in Australia. There was so much freedom for them to just bush bash and try to find these, you know, beautiful waterfalls and set up these camps as halfway points or whatever it might be or, or points that they can work out of as a base camp while they explore further and, and cut tracks. And you just don't, you just don't get them these days. Uh, you see national parks building these like really beautiful timber um, huts that almost look like, you know, they're more like a cabin. They, they're almost like a small house. Uh, which is, you know, nice for people who, who need that sort of stuff or if you get caught in a really bad storm, but it's not the same. It's definitely not the same. And they're not built and discovered by, you know, great people like Selby. So when you come here, you have to look after the place. If you use firewood that's been kept in here dry, gather more before you leave and place it back in here where it's dry um, and the next person can use it. Because what you need to remember is it's not just, you know, fellow hikers using the hut. It could be people who are actually in a dire situation. It could be life or death, especially up here in the Barrington Tops where the weather can change so quickly. So think about that. Think about worst case situation for the next person to come to this hut after you have been here and look after it. That's it. I won't say any more. Just look after these places because they are historical. It's part of just a gone by time that, uh... You know, we aren't <clears throat> we aren't fortunate enough to be a part of, and uh, <laughs> we will never get the opportunities that they had to discover new lands. Got a bit emotional there. Anyway, I'll leave a quick one here. Oh, that's actually that's. Gabby and Alex, shout out to you two. They're the two that um, I camped next to on the first night up here. Hope you guys got down that slope without too much drama. I'm about to find out how much it's going to hurt. Not looking forward to it. Farewell, mate. Well, guys, on that note, I'm going to do some stretching, chuck my pack on my back and head back down this bloody awful corker trail i now know why they call it the corker trail because my legs are bloody corked thanks for watching everybody i hope you enjoyed this one please subscribe if you did enjoy it got head torch on here look a bit weird if you are lucky enough to discover where this hut is uh it's well worth it make sure you are fit do not attempt this if you're just a weekender and you don't play any sport or go for runs because it'll kill you i'm not even lying <laughs> thanks for watching guys one last look at this beautiful forest See you later. See you in the next one. That's the out. We've done it again. No hubiera pensado que yo me iba a enamorar jamás. No quería saber nada más. Nunca más